the first question. Morning, Charles. Hello. How yeah, are you? hello. Hello, Nell. Thank you very much for the video. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to walk and talk at the same time because I was operating the DATV Express software, the Spectrum Analyzer software, the video capture software, and uh, so that's why the um, the talk was sort of a bit strung out. <laughs> that's very good. Very good. <coughs> so, have questions? we got any questions? There aren't usually many questions. <laughs> I could come up with a few for you, Charles. Um, so the first one is, what were you running the other end on? Were you running this across USB to a PC? Do, uh, can you hear that, Charles, or should I repeat? Yeah, you'll have to repeat it, because um, I've, I've got the conference video um, audio off at the moment. Yes. So um, Heather wants to know, what were you running at the other end? Was it USB, you, was it USB into Pluto, yes? Yes, USB into Pluto. That, that the USB is the only interface that Pluto's got. Although it, the device driver makes it appear as if it's either a USB device or uh, an internet protocol device. So the actual software was talking over IP, but the IP was going via uh, the USB interface, USB 2. Okay. okay. Second question for Second you. Second question Lauren. coming up. Um, right. With the uh, specs that I read online, it says that this guy has a 50 ppm oscillator. Is that a problem? So the question is, the specs say 50 ppm oscillator. Is that good enough or can you update it or whatever? Yeah, you can um, replace the, uh, the crystal oscillator with an external uh, oscillator if you want to. You, you'll have to remove the um, part off the board, but they've... Um, They've got left a hole on the board so that you can do that. And it'll take anywhere from a, a 10 meg reference to, um, I think it's about 80 meg or something. I think they, they, they're using a 40 meg reference actually on the board. But I just use the, uh, the reference that uh, it came with and everything locked to it. So, uh, I mean, TVs are designed to lock to pretty awful signals. So um, it's, it's fine for television. Um, Good. It might not be fine for something else, like uh, QPSK, uh, you know, in the microwave bands. Okay, next question. Okay, um, a quick observation. It's sometimes possible to buy drop-in replacement TCXOs for the ones on the board, of course. Um, but um, with the video demonstration you did with DVB-T at two uh, mega symbols per second, I think it was, um, you used a Pluto for the receive in that case? No. Uh, I heard that question. Good, good. No, I use I use the Hides uh, dongle to uh, to receive. There is software for um, for um, digital television reception in GNU Radio, but uh, I haven't actually tried using that. It's just that um, in contact with some German amateurs, DVPT at two mega symbols per second seems to be quite popular at the moment, and I wondered how you received it. So that uh, that's interesting. Thanks. Yes, they, it's it's quite common in the states as well. A lot of the Americans are using uh, DVB-T. It, it's it's really just us that uses the DVB-S stuff. Okay. Any other oh, questions? Terry, Terry G1LPS. Yeah. Hi, Charles. Is there any um, Hello, Terry. any plans to uh, put your SDR up onto it for the FM and SSB as well? So you'll have to repeat that because I didn't there, hear it. Is there any chance of you, or are you plans to put your SDR app on for uh, SSB and, and FM voice? Um, yeah, I heard him talking about that yesterday to somebody. Um, yeah, I, I, if it's not already on the on the DATV Express website, I can uh, I can uh, put that up. Uh, there's a slight issue with it because there's a a slight. Uh, difference in the sample rate of the Express software and uh, and the audio of the sound card on your PC, you, you occasionally get clicks on the audio and not much I can do about that. Okay, good. I think that's, uh, that looks to be it. So uh, thank you very much, Charles. As usual, it was uh, very thought-provoking. It's what we expect well, from you. 
I only had the thing for about a week when I when I did that video, and I had to do it about three times because I was talking to analog devices, and every time I learned a bit more about it, I had to recut some of the video. It's a bit <laughs> annoying, really. Yeah, I mean, and just to re-emphasise here at this end, it's um, we passed the hardware around, and the hardware is about a hundred pounds, um, and we'll do transmit and receive from 50 megs up to uh, five, uh, six gigs. Charles' software currently does uh, transmit, so uh, real potential for uh, for what we're doing. Uh, we've yeah. got one more question, yeah. Terry. Yeah, uh, the question was that uh, it's all very well having this stuff, but and it's great if you've got the brain the size of a planet, but is there an easy way of learning how to program this stuff and how to use it? Is there sort of tutorials and things? Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that, and I don't really have an answer for that because, I mean, I've been doing this stuff for the last 10 or 20 years, so, um, but um, there, there are relatively simple books. It's, it's really all down to maths. You need to know a bit of trigonometry. and yeah, just, um, just a bit. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I, I mean, it, it's fairly simple maths, actually. The really complex is, is when you're using adaptive filters that uh, try to optimize the system, and that's really complex maths. But the software-defined radio itself is, is relatively simple. There's a few concepts that you need to know. Um, I think the, probably the best thing to do is to... Uh, uh, um, I think probably GNU radio is quite good because you can actually build your own radios with that out of little blocks. So you can cut and paste the blocks on, on, in a visual environment and see what works and what doesn't work. And they've got lots of examples. Um, and GNU radio is getting easier to uh, to install now. I think they've got a, a thing called Pi Bombs, which will automatically install it onto your system. But that allows you to play with a with it as if you're soldering components onto a board almost, you know, so uh, you can try stuff out. And uh, so I, I think that's probably uh, my best suggestion. I mean, this is being marketed by analog devices as an SDR active learning module. So are they likely to produce any, any tutorials and educational material? Well, if they don't, I should imagine all the universities and high schools or whatever that are using it will. Yeah, it's just just a very new device. I mean, it's it's only been available to the uh, great unwashed for about uh, well, just under three weeks now. We, yeah, uh, one one question from me, Charles. It's Dave. Um, are you uh, planning on an Express Server version that will run with it? No, if, if, if there's demand for that, it could be done. I mean, all that goes, all that goes to the Pluto is IQ samples. So you just send it IQ samples at the symbol rate. So effectively, the, you know, the uh, 0.707 for the I and the Q um, at the symbol rate, and all the filtering is actually done on the board. So uh, the race cosine filtering is actually done in an FIR filter, which is actually in the chip itself. So uh, it means that the, the computer does very little. OK, yeah, there's a, a longer discussion to be had with ports down, about ports down there, I think. Yeah, it, you should be able to just... I, I, I don't know, what does ports down send to the actual ports down hardware? Uh, I and Q, ones and noughts. Yeah, so you'd have to convert that into... Um, you'd have to map that onto the constellation and send that across the link. But apart from that, there shouldn't be apart much else that. to do. <laughs> <laughs> See Thank you, of, Charles. Of horror there. Thank you very much, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, say, hang on, Charles. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, th thanks for everything you do to the uh, ATV community. We certainly uh, wouldn't be where we are without you. Okay, yeah. cheers Charles. Well, thanks very much. Thank cheers you. All.